Hey, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about Turner Acro Gouache. This is, um, well, Acro Gouache is a combination, well, I don't know, people say it's a, the best of both worlds of acrylic and gouache. Um, I'm still testing it. There are some things I really like about it. Uh, it has a really intense pigment. I did a color chart of all the colors that I bought. And there are definitely kind of some, what I think of as must have or really interesting colors. Of course, you know, colors can be mixed and you don't need to buy all these colors, but I wanted to show you some of the colors and then also um, how the acro, the Turner acro gouache goes on. So the colors that I thought were kind of exceptional and that I usually make myself, um, this Japanese pale blue. So they have, Turner has 219 colors of this, so it's pretty cool. But the regular, they have a series called Japanet, Japanesque color. And I think I got three of those, black blue, the pale blue, this light green, so they seem to be, I think those three, they seem to be kind of subdued, almost like a, maybe they have some more white pigment, pigment in them, even that a little bit, and less intense than the other colors. So that's the Japanese. And then I got this mixing white, which is not as intense a white as the regular white, but it's good for mixing with colors. Um, you can see, I. I Got a whole bat, you know, bunch of colors. They have a really good price on them on Jerry's Artorama. And um, I think, so I would say the colors that are pretty exceptional are this Japanese pale blue. You know, in my work, I use a lot of these greens. So I like this fresh green and also the Japanese light green. The coral red, that Turner makes is amazing, whether it's the gouache or the Turner or the uh, aqua gouache. It's both called, they're both called coral red. Let me look for it. It is so yummy. Um, I think the opera also, in fact, I used that in a piece here and I really like the pop that it gives you. It's not quite a fluorescent, but it just, it just, performs really well. And this, a lot of this is acro gouache, actually. Some of it's gouache. And I scraped through uh, to get some, some interest coming from underneath on that piece. So aqua green, of course, you know, I love that color, whether it's gouache or, or uh, acro gouache, doesn't matter. Um, well, you pick the colors you like. I just thought this color chart where they're actually painted is more accurate than what's on the website. Okay, so now let's use this piece to talk about or maybe play with it. This is a couple layers in. This is what they look like a couple layers in. They're, you know, they look like a hot mess. And that's maybe I've chosen a color palette. There's some acro already on here. There's some acrylic. You can hear because this paper was this crystal paper was gessoed so yeah that's crystal sometimes I use watercolor paper sometimes I use the uh, Bristol so I've put some layers of things on there but so one of the things I don't like and this applies to acrylic and acro gouache is I can't just you know have some colors here and revive them later, like I can with my gouache. You know, this is gouache, this is gouache. If I did it yesterday, if I wanted to, I just take my um, brush, wet it, and that color is ready to go. You know, so that I just, I just think I'm always gonna love the fact that I can do that. Whereas with acrylic and acro gouache, you cannot revive with water. Once they dry, they dry. I have some in here somewhere. Ooh, okay, that's that's acrylic that <laughs> they got trapped so it it didn't dry. I'm just using my palette paper very efficiently. So we'll try some, but you just don't want to get a lot of paint out because you're gonna end up 
wasting it because it can't be revived. Okay, so that's let's. Uh, I haven't even thought about what I want to do on this piece. So because I'm not even at that stage, I'm still building things. So, but I just want to show you how the acro gouache goes on. This is that Japanese blue, blue black, black blue. Okay. And it really kind of looks like an ultramarine. I'm not sure what the difference is. I thought it would be more black, and I really like a black blue, so I always have to mix my own. Um, in fact, I'm going to do that because it's not really what I want. I want more of a navy. So here's my black gouache. And yes, I'm going to mix gouache with acro gouache. It doesn't matter. I've mixed watercolor. I've mixed acrylic with gouache. That's probably <laughs> probably end up making my own acro gouache doing that. But so I'm just gonna since I'm not sure where I'm going with this, I'm just gonna show you. So it goes on similarly to gouache, um, and I do like that it's matte, just like gouache. It's not shiny and plasticky like acrylic. Although I'm told you can get matte acrylic, which you know. I think I have enough paint types. I don't think I'm going to add that just now. <laughs> so you add water to it just like you would an acrylic or a gouache. You just know that when this dries, that's the main difference. When this dries on this palette or on your paper, you're not you're not going to get get it back. You're not going to be able to um, interact with it again. And sometimes that's exactly what you want. Like let's say. I made these three blue shapes here and I I don't want the next layer to mix with that blue. Well then this is a great choice because it's not going to. Let's try just some circles over here. So like I said, it behaves. I, I feel like it behaves more like acrylic than gouache because of that drying issue. But it goes on. It's definitely more creamy than acrylic and easier to work with. I don't know if you can see this, but see how creamy that is? You know how acrylic can get just kind of gummy? especially if I add water. It's really nice. Creamy, easy to work with. So in that sense, I'd say it's easier than than um, acrylic. I'm just spoiled that I can leave my colors out and go back and use them again with the gouache. Let me show you on a piece of paper if we just took some watercolor paper. Let's see what how it behaves. You might be able to see it better. So I can use it without much water and get really intense. That does look pretty black blue. And then a little bit of water, a little bit lighter. So in that way it's Similar to really all paints where the more water you add, the lighter they get. It definitely it soaks into the paper. And when it gets real water, it really feels like a watercolor. But it dries like an acrylic. So if I were to come back and want to paint maybe some white on this on this blue leaf. It would work better than watercolor. Although I have painted white gouache on top of watercolor. That works. Let 
Yeah, Japanese black blue is very pretty. All right, so I hope that gives you a feel. Dries matte. Um, I recommend, you know, maybe try a few colors and just see how you like it. It's good to mix in with the gouache for those properties when you want it to not um, be disturbed by your next layer. Okay, I hope this was helpful. Get out there, get your paints out, get your something out, whatever you've got, and create. Here's, a, here's one that's in process. You can just start with marks and color and choose three or four colors and play with that. All right, lovelies, bye-bye.